Love One Session 73. Let's start this session talking about magic. What is this white magic? Or even black magic? Let's get magical. This is going to be a sort of medium session. The questions and the answers are somewhat long in some of them, so I will see if I can get it in two videos, but it'll probably be three, we'll see. However, in this video, we're gonna cover up to the point where they start talking about Jesus. We're gonna stop right there. That's my goal, um, it's almost half of the session, but there is there are bigger questions after that so we'll see how far we get um the biggest point so far is that there is a conversation about white magic or ritual magic um and so on and i'm not the best to talk about this because you know i'm not quite interested in these topics but i'll do my best to patch in everything that I know in terms of what they're talking about here. My point is that I won't be, give, be able to give you um, explanations or um, maybe parallels to it. I don't know, we'll see. It's just that I'm not very knowledgeable with this whole magical thing because that's a very occultist uh, practice sort of thing. I'm not interested like I said, and so I don't know much about it. But I do have some insights that may be helpful for the seeker, which is you. So let's start with the first question that I have, which is actually the first one, I think. I don't know why I included it this way uh, this time, but we'll see. It's the usual question from Don asking, could you please give me an indication of the instrument's condition? And Ra says, it is as previously stated, with the exception of the vital energy level, which is distorted more nearly towards that which is normal for this entity. All right. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. It is as previously stated, with the exception of vital energy level, which is distorted more nearly towards that. So she was recovering, right? I think that was the deal in the last session, her vital energies were... Uh, yeah, they said they have become distorted from normal levels, somewhat downward. Okay, so they're just stating she's recovering, basically, her lo normal levels. And that's it. Let's go to the next question. Don says, has the banishing ritual that we have performed been helpful for this contact? This is the banishing ritual I talked about before. I'll explain a little bit now. Ross says, the ritual described has gained with each working in making efficacious the purity of contact needed, not only for the raw contact, but for any working of the adept. And I think this holds one of my points before that um, there is, there is the, um, efficiency of the ritual as you repeat it it doesn't have to be magical ritual but just any ritual you can even call it brushing your teeth a ritual right something that you ritually do and you become very efficient right the more you do it so in the same way when you're doing a ritual for a specific purpose it becomes a lot more efficient that applies also to the mind, and actually mind and body are interrelated, so you get the point, that's all. I don't think there's much to say here, um, not only for the rock contact, but for any working of the adept, of course. Um, if you become familiar with something that makes you feel whatever it is that you're looking for, whatever it is that you're calling protection, um, maybe uh, information or peace or who knows like i said i'm not good at what these magical rituals are for but people use them and 
they they gain in power as they they continue to do it what it is that they're seeking it depends and that's why rituals obviously vary in terms of what they're looking for from the extremes of black magic and white magic to you know just protection for the house or you know whatever it is so that's it that's all i can offer there let's see question three don says thank you we would like to thank ra at this time for the opportunity to be of service to those of on this fear who would like to have the information that we gain here in this inaudible nothing we don't know what don said there but he was just saying thank you. You stated that free will, one pointed in service to others, had the potential of alerting a great mass of life strength. I assume that the same holds precisely true for the service to self polarity. Is this correct? Ra says this is incorrect, but subtly so. In invocation and evocation, of what may be termed negative entities or qualities, the expression alerts the positively oriented equivalent. However, those upon the service to others path wait to be called and can only send love. Okay. First of all, Don was saying thank you. It's a good point to emphasize that Don was grateful of all the material that was happening. Don actually said that this was the work of his life and it certainly was if you see don's history that's what it reflected he reflected the interest in a middle ground between science and spirituality to investigate this phenomenon of channeling well what's the best channeling that we have available on earth I think arguably is the law of one, the raw material. So yeah, Don was on point when he said that this was the work of his life and it certainly was because nothing compares to it uh, to this day. And he basically gave his life for it. So um, it was a tremendous opportunity for him. So again, just wanted to emphasize that because he is, he's taking time to say thank you directly I would assume that he knew that rather than need to be told through Carla or the instrument, thank you, but um, um, he, he wanted to say it anyway, so I, I appreciate it a little bit more for doing it, so that's that. Then, free will, one pointed in service to others, had the potential of alerting a great mass of life strength. We were talking about this a couple of sessions ago, maybe last session, I mentioned it too, or they mentioned it. And this refers to the calling of the raw contact. That's what it started because, let me see, I'll, I'll give you context here. They were discussing the whole thing about the negative entity attacking them and so on. And so Ra explained that this is because they create um, a big calling with the information that they were channeling. I just mentioned how important this channeling is for the community who uh, studies this type of philosophies, metaphysics, and so on. So you can you can imagine the the amount of information that was poured into this raw material, all. Uh, densified into the channeling so metaphysically that's a lot of light we're talking about six density materializing here the law of one being given right or at least the voice one of the voices of the law of one um, and so that light alerts um, a great deal of uh, other entities let's call them that Positive and negative, of course. We talked about that. So I think that was in the last session where I talked about how, well, Ra said that there is a, a calling of positive entities that are there to sort of help in the process, but also of negative entities that call themselves to it, even though they weren't called. <laughs> um, and that's what we see here with the change in polarities. That's what uh, Don was asking. 
not the change of polarity, but the difference in how entities of different polarities, they offer their service. And we'll get to that, but that's what Don is saying here. Um, now he says, I assume that, you know, in the same way that we're calling positive six density information, when there are adepts, negative adepts, humans, who do this black magic of calling uh, negative entities, then the positive ones are alerted to, right? And Ra explains something very succinct and uh, precise, actually. When they say that it is incorrect, but subtly so, it's not that they... We'll expand on this. So I won't... I won't expand myself here. So what they say is in invocation and evocation, if I can put a difference in invocation, uh, you invoke from, and it's hard to describe. Yeah, it's almost like the way I see it, invocation, it, we can see it both ways actually, but one is coming out of you and the other one is coming out of or you're you're taking out of outside of you you see one is coming from inside and the other one is coming from outside so invocation and evo evocation i'm not going to say which one's which you can think about it uh of what may be termed negative entities or qualities so basically doing this in and out of this qualities see this is why I don't like mm, too much the word entity because it lends to the idea that there are separate entities. And I'll talk about this because this whole discussion of magic creates the illusion of, once again, separation. And that's not so. You know, that's that may be only so for the, the portions of consciousness that believe to be separated. See, so I I cannot see that. You know, that's to me, uh, I cannot see it. I just don't see it. I don't see negative entities. And so see how Ra says, in invocation and evocation of what may be termed, emphasis here, in what may be termed negative entities or qualities, uh, the expression alerts the positively oriented equivalents. So, let me expand myself here with the negative entities. If we say that I am an entity and there are other entities, negative and positive ones, that are aiding me and all this stuff, the perception, it's not that it's wrong, but it's coming out of the idea of separation. You know, there is me and you. There is no, you know, um, you you split yourself and then when you split yourself you can attribute different responsibilities to it whereas if you know that there's only me and all that is contained within me i can call it whatever it is entities people um all these things then you're responsible for everything. You know, you're in charge. <laughs> you don't need to control anything because everything is in control. So that to me is a better and more efficient way to look at reality than the negative entity. So I like when Ra says, or qualities, qualities of who? Of the self, what else, right? Um, see, I'll, I'll give you an example here because I love doing it. We believe that we we live with other people that they're out there but the truth of it is that they live inside us right have you ever seen anybody outside of you no you've never seen anybody outside of you you've always seen them right here through your senses interpreted by the mind and experience it's all here it's never happened in any other place but here if you know this, you have the key to the universe. 
the universe is you. So uh, I'm only uh, making um, this point to once again bring you to that, uh, or invite you rather, to that place of I am this, everything that's happening. See, it's a much more balanced point of view. But going back to the raw material, uh, Ross says that the expression alerts the positively oriented equivalents, right? This invocation and evocation of the negative entities or qualities, it does alert, so it is true. That's why the incorrectness is subtle. Now, why is it subtle? Because Ross says, however, those upon the service to others path wait to be called and can only send love as opposed to say the negative entities who they go there you know you say oh here here's my service <laughs> here's my card uh call me if you need me you know uh, that's that's the negative entity um he's a hustler <laughs> whereas the positive ones they see the call and you know if the black magician or uh the blank ritualist somehow feels a sort of doubt of what it's doing and wants to think of love or something then the positive entities are there to feed him otherwise they'll just continue to do what they want but they positive entities don't abridge free will let's put it that way they don't get in your face they're there for the calling but they don't get in the way anyhow Let's move to question four, which will expand this a lot better. Don says, what I was trying to get at was that this alerting of light strength is, as I see it, a process that must be totally a function of free will, as you say. And as the desire and will and purity of desire of the adept or operator increases, the alerting of light strength increases. Is this part of it the same for both positive and negative potentials? And am I correct with this statement? Ra will explain, to avoid confusion, we shall simply restate for clarity your correct assumption. Those who are upon the service to others path may call upon the light strength in direct proportion to the strength and purity of their will to serve. Those upon the service to self path may call upon the dark strength in direct proportion to the strength and purity of their will to serve. Hmm. So it's basically the same, right? I think Don, um, is Don, Don, da, 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 da. yeah, this is what's going to bring the whole conversation of white magic. So um, let's see, let's reread. Don says, uh, the process that must be total function of free will, right? This alerting of life strength is a process of free will. Everything is free will, actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if in the context they're going to... Mm, yeah, give another connotation, but everything is free will. The way I see it, everything is free will. You, know, you you call for light, that is your free will. Those who attend your call, do it do so from their free will. Even those who get in your face like the negative entities, they do it out of their free will. So everything is free will. You can accept or reject with your free will. So everything is free will. Yeah. So Don says, and as the sire, as the desire and will and purity of desire of the adept or operator increases, right? The one that is asking for information for light, the alerting of light strength increases. Yes. Is this part of it the same for both positive and negative potentials? So yeah, I don't I don't see anything complicated here. You know, the more you ask for something, the stronger the light is and the more you alert other beings of the same or opposite. That's just how it works. Uh, it seems seems balanced to me, you know, because the creator doesn't want to just become a fanatic of one thing and have no options, you know. He wants to have the options. So the options are always balanced. That's just the nature of the universe, the universe is always balanced. 
The Ra says to avoid confusion, <laughs> I guess um, the question is, is it's just, um, it's fine. You know, I, I don't know where the confusion might be actually. Um, yeah, let, let's just say that Ra said this to restate it in a more coherent way. <laughs> and I think it's the same thing, right? They say, those who are upon the service to others path, right? Positive beings may call upon the life strength in direct proportion to the strength and purity of their will to serve. So they have a purity of will to serve, right? They will call uh, light in that direct proportion. Depending on that strength, they will call that light. The same applies to the negative, right? Those upon the service to self path may call upon the dark strength, not light, but dark strength, in direct proportion to the strength and purity of their will to serve. Strength and purity of their will to serve. Same thing, direct proportion. That's the same thing. <laughs> Ra simply said, yes, both do the same thing. The only thing that I would add to this is that light is information. Light is truth. The darkness, as they call it, the dark strength, is that which is not. That which is not is separation. Separation obviously has a whole uh, system, a whole system of domination, manipulation, and aggrandizing, and so on. All of these things are tools available for the creator to know itself through the path of separation. So. When you call upon the dark strength, you're calling for those tools that assist you in the feeling of separation, which is a viable call. It's completely viable. And guess what? A lot of people do it. And they do it consciously, of course. This is what... Um, I'm sorry to talk about the elite, which is something that is... It's sensitive sometimes, but I am not unfamiliar with it. It's it is what it is, you know. It must be acknowledged. Why would be why would we be so um, in denial of something that is bringing balance to Earth? And that is the negative beings, you know, those who are few but obviously create. Where do you think this whole control system came out of? If not from people over time, over generations, who have called upon this dark strength. Whether they do it in ritual, I'll talk about this, but whether they do it in ritualistic magic or not is the same. You don't do this only in ritualistic magic. You know, you can, and I think that's a sort of archaic way to do it. <laughs> I don't think it's needed. Uh, I think it's a playful way to do it too, I suppose. But it's not needed. You know, that is to give some credence to rituals that increases the light and information that you receive I don't think that's true it just doesn't hold uh, true to um, the absolute self it doesn't but yes the point is that a lot of negative entities use these tools to create the sensation of separation what do they get they get the tools to domination and control and manipulation and dominion and so on conquering what do you think all this came from just a fluke of the universe to give us this negative no it's a balancing thing so yeah that's what we're experiencing um so yeah this question was just a restatement actually of what don said in in other words and i think it's just i would even refine this to say Yes, anybody who seeks from one path will get, depending on the strength of the will and purity of their seeking to serve, they'll get that, positive or negative. So it depends on that strength of seeking. Yeah. Don't simply explain that, you know, it depends on the purity and intensity and so on, but that's it. We got it all clear out. Let's move on. Question 5. Don says, I will undoubtedly make many errors in my statements today because what I'm going to do is try to guess at how this works and let you correct me. So here we go. Here's where we're going to get into Magia. Which, by the way, is the 
the same root as Maya, Matra, Matter, the illusion, the magic. All right, question five, Don asks, this is after he, this whole answer, by the way, is a, a resounding no from Ra. <laughs> um, but I think it's just a formulation of Don's question. So let's let's keep that in mind. It's The answer to this is no. Don says, in considering the exercise of the middle pillar, I have thought it to be to be wrong in that the adept sees or visualizes light moving downward from the crown chakra down to the feet. Ra has stated that the creator enters from the feet and moves upward, and that this spiraling light enters from the feet and moves upward. It seems to me that an adept alerting light strength in visualizing the use of this would visualize it entering in the direction of the feet and energizing first the red energy center and moving upward through the energy centers in that fashion. Is this correct? Ra says, no. Don says, could you tell me how I am wrong in that statement? Something tells me that Ra doesn't want to talk about this because they just say yes. <laughs> Don says, would you please do that? <laughs> Sometimes I think Ra was joking. I'm pretty sure they were joking. What else would they be doing? So Ra says in question seven, there are two concepts which you deal with which you deal. The first is the great way of the development of the light in the microcosmic mind-body spirit. It is assumed that an adept will have its energy centers functioning smoothly and in balance in a balanced manner to its best effort before a magical working. So a couple of things here. Let's go back to Don's question. I think, so here's the deal, that this middle pillar, which is just a, a sort of ritual that exists, right? I don't even know what it is, but this middle pillar has um, the adept visualizing it moving downward from the crown chakra. So there's energy coming down from the crown chakra. I wouldn't even say this is wrong. I don't even know if there is a right way to visualize things, right? Uh, so, from the beginning, I think we can state that. I don't know how true it is. Maybe Ra said no because it is okay to... Because, remember, Don said that he thought it was wrong to visualize the light moving downward from the crown chakra. I don't think it's wrong or right. But let's see if we find something within Ra's answer. And then Don um, sort of quotes... Ra when they said that the light that enters from the feet or from the bottom, let's just call it from the bottom of of the energy centers, and that's the creator. The creator is the only one that enters there. So there is no need for protection. I talked about this before. There is no need for protection uh, down or at the lower energy centers because that's only the creator coming in, right? The light that is coming in. So protection is only from the top, the crown chakra. And that's why Ra, uh, Don is saying, you know, you said that the creator enters from the feet and moves upward. And that this spiraling light enters from the feet and moves upward. Okay, yes, it comes from the feet or from the bottom and goes up. That's prana, that's kundalini, right? We'll talk about kundalini too. It seems to me that an adept alerting light strength in visualizing the use of this would visualize it entering in the direction of the feet. This is where I, I don't, maybe if I can get esoteric here and just have my own opinion, I don't think this is something that you do. You know, it's almost like, I'll try to explain this, but it's almost like saying, look alive. <laughs> How do you look alive? <laughs> you know, usually it's just like, oh, don't be, you know, um, sluggish or uh, bored or lazy. Just look alive, look fr uh, frenetic. <laughs> or frantic, uh, rather, you know, uh, how do you do it? So visualizing the light coming from the bottom, I don't think it does any magic because it's already coming from there. So it's you, <laughs> I, that's just my point of view. That's what it means to for the creator to come from the bottom. It's filtering, you consciousness is coming through the filters of the energy centers. You don't need to visualize it, it's already happening. <laughs> 
But I, I guess it does have a purpose. I don't know. In any case, Ross says, no, uh, this is not correct. Whatever it is that is not correct, Ross going to talk about it, see? Zon says, could you tell me what, how I'm wrong in that statement? And they say, yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they were um, trolling, joking. But in any case, they... I do notice that whenever whenever Rod doesn't want to talk about something, they just try to answer like, yes, are you going to make us talk about it? <laughs> you know, uh, it's like when you when you get in trouble and you don't want to talk about what you did and <laughs> you just try to avoid it. That's what I think Rod was doing. So when Don pushed the issue, then they're saying, all right, we'll talk about it. <laughs> So Ross says, there are two concepts with which you deal. The first is the great way of the development of the light in the microcosmic mind-body spirits. It is assumed, so I don't know what that means. The first is the great way of the development of the light in the microcosmic mind-body spirit. We'll see, but I don't know what that means. It is assumed that an adept will have its energy centers functioning smoothly and in a balanced manner to its best effort. So this is already setting up the scenario Please bear this in mind, this is important. Ra is saying that we are assuming, right? We are assuming that the adept that's doing the magic is sufficiently uh, uh, balanced in its lower energy centers, right? Energy centers functioning smoothly. They say all energy centers, actually. They don't say lower energy centers. They say, we'll have its energy centers functioning smoothly. So. I mean, obviously, you have to have your lower energy centers functioning smoothly to a degree for you to have some energy to work with, right? Love, heart, at least from from the white magic. So before a magical working, we're assuming that the adept has this. All right. What else did they say? Let's read it. Let's read it together. All magical workings are based upon evocation and or invocation. Again, you can ascribe whatever meaning to those, but one is from inside and the other one's from outside, as I see it. In and E, E from external, in from internal. Um, the first invocation of any magical working is the invocation of the magical personality, as you are familiar with this term. In the working of which you speak, the first station is the beginning of the invocation of this magical personality, which is invoked by the motion of putting on something. Since you do not have an item of, or an item of apparel or a talisman, the gesture which you have made is appropriate. So, all right, how, how does this magic start? According to um, any invocation of the magical working, that's the magical personality. I believe the magical personality is associated with, you know, some sort of sincerity that is brought into the mix when you're going to do a ritual. You you become, I don't want to use the word serious, but sincere. Um, you become honest about your intentions. That is the magical personality. Um, it is invoking the higher self. It is invoking that which is bringing you closer to what you want. The higher self is the closest resource that we have for that, or the best resource we have. In the working of which you speak, right? The invocation of the magical personality is by putting on something, clothing or something like that, a, a talisman, they say, Anything it doesn't have to be clothing, but it could be a bracelet, could be quartz, uh, crystals, or I don't know, um, a blanket, uh, superhero uh, uniform, whatever. It doesn't matter. There's nothing in particular. It's, it's whatever you hold dear, I suppose. I do have some little experience about this with my uh, plant medicine ceremonies in the past and seeing how the whole ceremony was created and all of this, people would dress in white and so on. All of this is the magical personality. There's nothing inherent about, uh, to me at least, within things I know metaphysicists will say, no, white is the color that you should use. But I don't stress it. 
you know, does that mean I need to be dressed in white every time? No, it doesn't. None of this is really necessary, to be honest. But yes, there, we put importance to it. And if we put importance, then it is important. <laughs> it's not that it's not uh, necessary. It doesn't mean important. See, whatever it is important is what you're going to give energy to, your will and your purity, right? So you put that into, since we're talking about magic here, and Don was one of the things that I don't, not that I don't agree, but I just don't follow with Don and uh, Eleanor research at that time was the use of all this. I don't blame them, of course. I'm just thinking that this was the, the new age sort of thing at the time. See, it's like, um, it's funny, but all of this, you know how there was a, a sort of renaissance in here, in the US at least, in the Western world, mainly in the US with the hippie movement, because we threw away religion. We said, you know, we don't need religion. We have spirituality. We're all cool. We're all hippies, right? That's, um, that's something that happened in the 50s and 60s. That movement of talking about, bringing about other religions here and saying, they're all the same, you know, they're all cool. And um, the hippie movement came out there, right? That was a lot of celebration of freedom. That's what the hippie movement was. Then right now, after we have tightened again, you see in the 80s, we became very uh, religious again. <laughs> the hippie movement just went away. Then in the 90s came the depression, you know, uh, the, the um, self-deprecating sort of thing. Then came the emos and all of these. I'm not talking about people in specific, but just the, the eras that we have lived as a collective consciousness, this, this whole expression. And so now we're releasing against the, um, the, the knot that was created between the 80s and the 90s. And even the 2000s, there was a lot of, I don't know, the 2000s to me is a lot of that. Um, I'm going to sound judgmental here, but that insincere expression of what we are so accustomed to do, you know, the stereotyping and so on. Uh, that was kind of that. And now we're getting into a lot of this spirituality, you know, you can see it. You can see, you can always see what's happening in the collective consciousness with marketing. Marketing just makes it so obvious, right? <laughs> you see how everything now it's labeled ecological and uh, gluten-free and all very conscious, you know. Uh, it's all about that. So now we have the hippie movement again. <laughs> only disguised as spiritual, whatever it is. So all of that is, uh, it's unnecessary, but it happens. You know, how do we deal with that? Well, we put, um, we put our energy into it. We, I mean, collective humanity. That's just what's happening. You know, it's, I have nothing against it. It's just the reading of the cycles. Um, so there, there's a big awakening and so on. The same thing happened in the 60s and 70s with the awakening of the hippie movement and so on. Uh, but you see, there, there's that celebration and then there is the, the truth behind the celebration. What are we celebrating? We forget what we're celebrating because we're celebrating. <laughs> That's what happens. We forget what we're celebrating. And what we're celebrating really is just life. It's, uh, it's pure life. So whatever kind of celebration is fine only that we get lost sometimes. So again, I say that this is not necessary, but it is something that we, we give importance to it. Let's move on. Rosses, the second station is the evocation of the great cross of life. This is an extension of the magical personality to become the creator. This is an extension of the magical personality to become the creator, right? Again, all invocations and evocations are drawn through the violet energy center. This then may be continued towards whatever energy centers are desired to be used. And that ends the, the answer there. So this is the correctness. I think this is, this is what it is. And we're going to make a synthesis out of this at the end. But you see, we're calling on energy from the top. Why is from the top? Because from the bottom 
it's only the creator coming in. This is my speculation. I could be wrong, but I think this way. From the lower energy centers, only the creator can enter. Nobody else. When you're doing magic, you are asking that which already has manifested to aid you. You see? Hmm. Let me put it this way. You know how you always make a decision, but you call on other people to advise you for that decision? In the end, it's you who made the decision. Nobody made the decision for you. It's impossible for anybody to make the decision for you because you have to act. And so the creator is always coming from that decision making, whereas the influence of the decision comes from outside. Well, the same thing is happening here. If you're going to do magic, well, guess what? That magic is the molding. And this is why I say that it's not necessary to do magic, none of this stuff, to be at peace with yourself, whatever it is. The question is, why do you want to, why do, you want to do magic? You see, you want to do magic, and I'll, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but you want to do magic because life is boring, because life is not enough. You want to do something special. Yeah, for it to be magic, this has to be unmagical. Does that make sense? You see, I'm going to make magic because I want to achieve something. There is a purpose. You see, there is an ulterior motive. And you're not aware of it, but you're doing it. Right? Um, which is not the same as acting, just simply acting. That is the creator. See, <laughs> that spontaneity is the creator. That's what we love about children. So that's why Ra said the second station, or after the magical personality has been invoked, is the evocation. So see, invocation seems to be, is that, am I right there? Uh, the first invocation is that invocation. Yeah, they talk about invocation with the magical personality. It's coming from you. <laughs> it's you. you. You want to embody this creator, right? And so the extension of the magical personality to become the creator is that evocation of the great cross of life. What is that great cross of life? I don't know. Uh, but they say all invocations and evocations are drawn through the violet ray, violet energy center. This may be continued towards whatever energy centers are desired to be used. All invocations and evocations are drawn through the violet energy center. I suppose that's what it is. You know, the, it has to be from the violet ray is that which is already, not what, not not the, the unmanifested self, if I can even use that. So, yes. Maybe that's the part where Don was wrong in believing that it was wrong to think about it. So he was right, basically. <laughs> Prior to thinking that he was wrong, he was right. And it's okay to imagine the light from the top, from the crown chakra. This is also rings some bells about the, uh, the, I forgot, in Spanish they call it Llama Violeta, which is um, the violet flame, fire, I don't know. But um, there's also Saint, Germa, Saint, Saint Germain's uh, prayer, which is violet too, something like that. It's all crown chakra again anyhow that's so far what we got let's move on don says question eight then will you speak of the difference between the spiraling light that enters through the feet and the light invoked through the crown chakra good point ra says the action of the upward spiraling light drawn by the will to meet the inner light of the one infinite creator may be likened to the beating of the heart and the movement of the muscles surrounding the lungs and all the other functions of the parasympathetic nervous system. The calling of the adept may be likened to those nerve and muscle actions over which the mind-body-spirit complex has conscious control. Two things, beautiful actually. The sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So the parasympathetic is that one which is mm, autonomic, right? It's autonomic, it's functioning without you having any conscious control over it, right? You don't have to tell, beat my heart, beat my heart, beat my heart, or you know, produce uh, hormones, produce hormones, produce hormones, and circulate my blood, circulate my blood, all of these things. 
You don't have to do those actions. To us humans, it really is happening all at once. We do believe that we have a sympathetic nervous system, which is the one that, oh, we are in control of that. That's the illusion. <laughs> We're not in control because there is no us. There is only this. But we do. We do believe that. I'm moving my hand, even though I can't explain how I do it. You ever notice that? You can't explain how you move your hand. Move it right now and try to explain it. You can't because it happens. It simply happens. You may say, I think about it, but you're only thinking about it. You're not doing it. Once you do it, you didn't think about it. The, the thought didn't cause the movement. There is a correlation, but not really. Um, I forgot what they say. Uh, correlation and causation, something like that. It's not the same. Anyhow, um, so okay, the action of the upper spiral light drawn by the will. We're talking about two lights here. It's the bottom and the top, right? So the bottom is the one that is coming out, the prana. It's just simple flowing of the one creator. Um, will meet the inner light of the one infinite creator, maybe like in the beating of the heart and the movement of the muscles surrounding the lungs and all the other functions, the parasite, the, uh, the calling of the adept, maybe like into those nerve and muscle actions over which the mind body through complex has conscious control. How do you live? Two, two ways. This is, this is another way to, to put it. Do you do your life? Do you consciously choose to be alive? Or is that a natural thing that is happening? It is a natural thing that's happening. You can't remember how you started life. How did you decide to be alive? You never think about that, right? Because you, you didn't. It's just happening. That is the upper spiral of light, right? Now the upward, or rather the downward, the inner light, Ra uses different terms, but inner light is the same as downward spiraling light, which is the polaris of the self, which I love, um, and uh, the guiding star and so on. Shiva, if you will, um, Shakti at the bottom, the upward spiraling light, all of this actually is, um, is you taking conscious control, right? You are living and you are doing things. That is the um, the conscious control. That is the other way to explain it, see? So all these two things are working together. And that's why I believe that the magical rituals and all of these stuff, they deal with the influence of how to live, but not life itself. Life itself is already automatic. It's just happening. And if you get with that, then you're in balance. Um, we do have a sort of love for what is happening. And that is the conscious love that we have. That is the other part of the creator. That is the guiding star. To me, that is the most important thing. Finding love in what you are and what you do. We don't need rituals for that. We only need to come to terms with life and say, this is happening. <laughs> I'm not doing it. It's happening to me. And that would be a closer um, approach to, to this, to what is. So yeah, that's, uh, I like how they use the parasympathetic nervous system here to explain um, all this um, natural function. That is the upper spiraling light. Um, and the other side is just our conscious attention. Where do we bring it? That is what's guiding the experience itself. So speaking of experience, let's experience the next question. Question nine, Don says, previously you stated, I believe I'm correct in saying this, that where the two directions meet, you have a measure, let us say, of the development of any particular mind-body-spirit complex. Am I correct? Ron says, this is correct. And I'll just give a refresher on Kundalini. Kundalini is these two energies meeting. So the first one is life itself, right? And where your conscious attention meet it is where the Kundalini will be, right? 
Uh, we can talk about Kundalini for a while because there's so much information out there. Some misleading, some uh, misinformation, others uh, very accurate, but we need context always. You know, so the, the only point that is important is that you can recognize where your Kundalini is. Kundalini goes up and down. You know, you can be all at peace, meditation, and so on. Your Kundalini is just going all the way to the crown chakra. It's right there. It's just pure samadhi. And suddenly, I don't know, a tree falls or some animal jumps on you and you go all the way down to the red. <laughs> That's okay. You know, so where do you live most of your life when you are sitting, when you're normal, you know, when there's no stimulus outside? Well, people, and I can tell you, I don't have to tell you, <laughs> you have examples of your own around you. There's people who love living in the different energy centers, and that's okay. That's the creator expressing itself through those energy centers. Uh, so the Kundalini is, that's what Don mentioned. And Ra says, yes, that is correct. Um, what did Don say? That where the two directions meet, you have measure of the development of a particular mind-body-spirit complex. Yes, because it's not like, oh, I got scared today, uh, so I'm living there. No, I mean, the measure, the total measure, the day, how long were you there, you know, and what, what's happening? These people tend to manifest whatever it is that they're thinking. Um, so that's why the energy centers are kind of measured. They don't really exist. They're just a measure, just like meters don't exist, but they are a useful measure. Um, and so depending on the activity of the mind, then these energy centers are activated, crystallized, potentiated, blocked, and so on. It's all mind. So again, oh, Gabe said that the energy centers don't exist. They don't. Just like nothing exists. <laughs> it's just an apparent thing. But we do measure it because we have a perception. I know this is kind of uh, abstract what I just said, but you should get the point by acknowledging that all that there exists is just consciousness perceiving itself through the illusion of separation. See, there is no true, there is no true matter, energy, light, darkness. All of this is perception within the re self-reflecting consciousness, if that makes sense. So, all right. I didn't mean to get too uh, mystical here, but that's what Kundalini is. That's what they're talking about here. It's the measure where these two energies meet. I have other videos. Um, session 49, I remember, was Kundalini, so go check it out if you want. Session 49, two parts. All right, let's get to the next question. Don says, in invoking the alerted lights, then, it would seem to me that the visualization of the invocation would be dependent upon what the use was to be of the lights. The use could be for healing, could be for communication, or it could be for the general awareness, you might say, of the creation and the creator. Would you please speak on this process and my correctness in making this assumption? This is actually pretty good. I like it. It's... Um Makes sense. Ra explains, we shall offer some thoughts, though it is doubtful that we may exhaust this subject. Indeed, it's a very deep one. Each visualization, regardless of the point of the working, begins with some work within the indigo ray. Right, that's the form making uh, body. As you may be aware, the ritual which you uh, have begun is completely working within the indigo ray. This is well, for it is the gateway. From this beginning, light may be invoked for communication or for healing. You may note that in the ritual which we offer you to properly begin the raw workings, the first focus is upon the Creator. So, uh, there's more to say here. This is a long answer, actually. Yes, it is. Um, so, <clears throat> First, the question was really good. In invoking this alerted light, right, when you invoke this uh, this light, which once again doesn't have to be through a ritual or magic. I suppose magic is a um, 
has some ambiguity to it. But um, yeah, it doesn't have to be with a ritual, is what I'm saying. Magic happens regardless of what we do. Everything is magic, really, if we pay attention to it. But Don says, in invoking the alerted lights, it seems to me that visualization could be used um, by different things. It could be healing, it's hard communication, throat chakra, or it could be used for general awareness, indigo, right? And so you could use it once you have invoked that light. Let me not, let me de-esoteric it. De-esotericize it? I don't know. <laughs> um, let me take away the esoteric part. Depending on how you want to live your life, your spiritual part, right? Because you're not thinking about, you know, reality. You're not wanting to do things in the physical. You're sitting here and saying, what is this all about? You know, let me get there. Let me get to the bottom of this. You know, and depending on that direction that you have, which is molded by your experience, of course, and you're seeking, depending on that, you can just simply use that energy, that calmness, that that's what spirituality is. It's just shut up. <laughs> just shut up and listen to what's happening. When you listen to what's happening, it's like, wow, it's this sea of tranquility. What am I going to do with it? Am I going to use it for healing? Am I going to use it for uh, communication? Or will I use it for the pleasure of enjoying the joys of the creation? What it is. You know, that's what Don says. Uh, general awareness of the creation and the creator. It's joy. It's like complete joy. So that's why Ross says, you know, we're going to talk about it, but it's doubtful that we can talk about uh, completely about this. All right, so each, visual, each visualization, regardless of the point of the working, begins with the work within the indigo ray, right? You call upon the lights from the violet ray, and it goes to indigo. Why? Because the indigo is the first one to make it, uh, create form, make thoughts out of it, to materialize it. You see, that's why it's called the, the form maker body form making body for maker form maker and same holds true here you know you have thoughts you have ideas you have images you have concepts all of these things are being produced by the indigo ray as you may be aware the ritual which you have begun is completely working within the indigo ray this is well for it is the gateway that's just repeating what i said it's a gateway for intelligent energy but let me know get into that from this beginning light may be invoked from communication or healing yes you may note that in the ritual we offer that's the ritual uh, banishing no uh the circle of the one i think it is they first focus on the creator so that's that that's the mechanic so far Rock continues and says we would further note uh, a point which is both subtle and of some interest. The upward spiraling light develop in its path by the will and ultimately reaching a high place of mating with the inward fire of the one creator still is only preparation for the work upon the mind body spirit which may be done by the adept. I don't know why they didn't say complex but there's going to be some issues about mind body spirit complex in the future but I'll get to that. All right, so still is only preparation for the work upon the mind, body, spirit, which may be done by the adept, okay? There is some crystallization of the energy centers used during each working so that the magician becomes more and more that which it seeks. Uh, so, this is pretty esoteric, actually. The upper spiraling lights develop in its path by the will, so as it goes up, or you acknowledge that which is coming up, that which is life, and ultimately reaching a high place of mating, um, union, yoga, with the inward fire of the one creator, they call it inward fire, is, um, this is the same downward spiraling lights, right, which is, the polaris of self i love that 
I love Polaris itself, it's the guiding star. This is still only preparation for the work upon the mind, body, spirit, which may be done by the adept. In the future, in other sessions, they're going to, because they're going to talk about pre-veil and post-veil, mind, body, spirit complex. Sometimes it's not used and it's used and where it shouldn't and there's just a whole issue. But I don't think that there was an issue here. They're talking about the mind, body, spirit, not the complex one. So there is some crystallization of the energy centers used during each working. Because the magician or the adept becomes more that which it seeks. Hmm. This is to me important because you see the more you do work, the more you do something, the more you become that. The more you <laughs> it goes everywhere. Whatever it is that you want to be, you become that the more you seek it, right? I don't think there's anything esoteric there. It's just the more you focus your attention into what you want to become, then without you putting an effort to it, you just become it. You are that. See, this is true for anybody, for anybody and whatever. This is why people say you can manifest anything you want, but you have to put your will there. <laughs> you see, is that like, well, I'm craving today to have this, so I will manifest it. Uh, doesn't work that way. You you have to put an effort to it to to manifest it and to become that. It's mostly manifested. It, manifesting is to become that, not to acquire physical material. <laughs> you have to become that to be surrounded by it, right? So this is how I would summarize this paragraph. Um, that's the, to me, the subtle and, and interesting point that they make. So let's keep reading. Rases at the end. More importantly, the time space mind body spirit analog, which is evoked as the magical personality has its only opportunity to gain rapidly from the experience of the catalytic action available to the third density space time mind body spirit <laughs> is complicated oh my god it's complicated it, it sounds complicated it's not thus the adept is aiding the creator greatly by offering great catalyst to a greater portion of the creation which is identified as the mind body spirit totality of an entity my god that they made it complex <laughs> uh let's go piece by piece Okay, more importantly, the time-space mind-body-spirit analog. What is the mind-body-spirit analog in time-space? It's you, it's the, um, imagine you're a crystal, right? That's what you are, you're a crystal. A crystal doesn't have light, but it bends light. See, light is the creator. See, and the crystal is going to bend the light and shine a different hue, depending on the configuration. I mean, crystal quartz, for example, they just have a different configuration and they can uh, shape light in any color or prism, right? So, so please stick with me with this one. What you call the shell of third density, this body is a prism of light. That light is the creator. It's you actually, because the prism has nothing. I mean, not the prism, the crystal has nothing without light. Light is the creator. So once the creator, you can call this the upward spiraling light, right? That's the light that goes through you. It goes into manifestation of seven energy centers, okay? This manifestation radiates out here in space-time as me or you or the neighbor or whoever. The creator is doing all of this. It's just shining light through all these crystals, right? And that prism changes. Now, the reality of the creator is closer to the, the time-space, mind-body-spirit analog. Why? Because that's the prism. That's the light. Now, the crystal is doing the work to shape it. But the light that is coming out, distorted as it is, because it is distorted. There's only white light, but it gets into different colors. That is the analog. That is the time-space, time -space, mind-body-spirit analog. analog. Okay, so this analog is evoked as the magical personality in the work. 
that one has its only opportunity to gain rapidly from the experience of the catalytic action available to the third density space-time mind-body-spirit. So the space-time mind-body-spirit is the crystal that I'm talking about, right? The crystal is exposed to environmental changes. That's the catalytic action and shapes the colors and the configurations. I'm making a very poor analogy here with crystal and the prism and all of this stuff. But think about life. Life is the environment, is providing catalyst to this crystal that I am. And the way I process this light reflects on the time-space analog that I am. See? That, that I project. It's not even that I am. It's that I project or that this projects. The only thing that exists is the creator. And in this case, the only thing that exists is light. Crystals are there to distort light into different... Uh, I talked about that, right? So that's, that's the best way I can summarize this first part of the paragraph. Then they say, thus the adept, who is the adept? The adept is the crystal, still is the crystal, is aiding the creator. Who is the creator? Is the light greatly by offering great catalyst by being exposed to the environment to a greater portion of the creation which is identified as the mind body spirit totality of an entity which is just the fullness of experience here my analogy of the prism and everything else breaks down because the mind body spirit totality of an entity is the completion of unity with everything that there is of this particular crystal Right? Only white light goes through it at that point. You see, that is the mind, body, spirit totality. It doesn't refract any more uh, different lights. It only, it's a crystal. It's a crystal, a full crystal. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't bring this analogy to, to a better extent, but that's how far I go. <laughs> All right. Um, let's cover a little bit more. Let's see how we have 11 and 12. That would lead us to, yeah, we'll talk about Jesus next time. So let's finish this with question 11 and 12. Question 11 though, Don says, desire and will are key factors in the process. Is this correct? Ra says, we would add one quality. In the magical personality, desire, will, and polarity are the keys. Don follows up and says, I would then assume that the many so-called evangelists, which we have in our society at present, may have great desire and great will, and very great will, and possibly great polarity. It seems to me that in some cases that there is a lack of information or awareness that creates a less than effective working in the magical sense. Am I correct in this analysis? Um... Ross says, you are partially correct. In examining the polarity of a service to others working, the free will must be seen as paramount. Those entities of which you speak are attempting to generate positive changes in consciousness while abridging free will. This causes the blockage of the magical nature of the working, except in those cases wherein an entity freely desires to accept the working of the evangelist, as you have called it. So, let's go back to... Uh, Question 11, where Ra includes not only desire and will, but polarity. It's crucial for this type of working because your polarity is really your direction, it's your compass. Uh, for the process, yeah, the key factor is polarity, along with will and desire, of course. What is your desire? To know yourself. What is your will? To know the Creator, right? Know that you're the Creator, not a separate Creator, it's you. <laughs> How can you be the creator? How can I convince you? I tell my students sometimes, all I'm trying to do is convince you that you're perfect. So all that you argue against it is, you know, what you want to argue. <laughs> so how can I convince you? How can I convince you that you are a perfect being in all your apparent distortions, right? Um, so yeah, desire, will, and polarity. Okay, then Don, throws in the evangelist as a sort of example saying or claiming that they have great desire and very great will let's assume that's the case i believe a lot of evangelists simply do it because uh automatic i suppose they just want to do it 
and think that you know you must be saved and Ra explains you know very elegantly that um, the polarity of the service to others working in examining the polarity of a service to others working the free will must be seen as paramount in other words if I want to serve others their free will is important so if they want to come here and talk to me about uh, the virus and you know the, the shot and all these things okay that's what you want to talk about that's fine I, I, I have no intentions of changing you unless you ask me a question then I will answer you <laughs> my answer will be from my heart from what I believe I won't try to you know shape it so you feel comfortable or anything like that not service to others it's just you ask I answer you don't ask you talk I listen to you Sometimes you ask and I don't answer. That's actually um, it's called a noble silence. Silence. So those entities of which you speak, the evangelists, are attempting to generate positive changes in consciousness. Yes, they do have an intention of this works for me, so it should work for you. <laughs> no, thank you. That's a bridging free will. It's saying this is the only way. I don't think all of them do it, but. You know, if, well, here they say this causes the blockage of the magical nature in the working, except in those cases. You see, it's already causing a blockage of any magical nature because you're not receiving anything, or you're not, nobody's receiving what you're giving. So you have to be, um, you have to be skillful if you want to teach something. You can't just go and tell people, you need this. <laughs> you have to be you you have to embody it that's what it is you have to embody what you preach you know what do they say uh, walk the talk all right except in those cases wherein the entity freely desires to accept the working of the evangelist of course the person that says oh yes you know i've been suffering so far and i think you i asked god this morning and you come to my door let's talk at that point yes they are providing that service you can see this you it's so simple to see service to others is just how people want to talk to you and in in terms of that service to others is much more broad but in terms of communicating with people and sharing it's depending on what people want to do you know and you should always respect that whatever they want to say and want to uh, want to listen from you so that's it that's all i got uh for this session first part of the session 73 conclusions my emphasis goes back to what I said it's not necessary to do ritual it's not necessary to look for magic magic is all around us Maya the illusion shares its roots with magic in fact that's what it means it means uh, illusion as wow you know not illusion as deception but illusion Ooh when we're kids and some illusionist plays a trick with us, we're, oh, whoa, that happened. How did that happen? We don't know. And it's better not to know. That cultivates something inside us, the unknown, the beauty of the unknown. If you know the magic, uh, the magician's trick, it becomes dull and meh. I know how they do it. It's not impressive. So that's magic. Now, to seek magic in some sense, I know Rob was talking about the magical, metaphysical magic and all of this. Uh, yes, it happens naturally. My point is that we don't need to invoke magic for it to happen. It's happening all the time. We just need to pay attention. I'm not saying that you have to pay attention for magic to happen, but if magic is happening, then just pay attention. It is happening. <laughs> Synchronicities move along the same lines you see synchronicities are happening all the time it's only when we pay attention and we say oh i see it yeah and so this is why people get so excited when they start seeing 11 11 333 and 969 or 369 or whatever it is and then the rest of you know oh my god somebody called me when i was thinking about them and all these things this is happening all the time you just have to pay attention and it depends on where your direction is Yes, I do say that there is a permeability of synchronicities. 
Because eventually synchronicities become everyday things, mundane things, without the connotation of being uh, mundane. No, it's fabulous all the time, happening, right? And you're enjoying it. That's magic. But there is, you know, there's... Um, I'll tell you what it is. We, we have lived a very dull life, according to science and politics and society. Everything is it's down, you know, it's just depressing. That's what it is. We have lived a sort of depressed life. Ask anybody, you know, hey, how you doing? Well, you know, hanging out or hanging in there. You know, hanging in where? Like you're hanging in from dear life uh, to dear life. What the expression of all of us is always like coming out of depression. <laughs> so you see, when we talk about these things and we open up to the possibility that there are metaphysical things happening, the world is magic, then, oh my God, I want to exploit this magic. And that's why we get into sort of, um, it's the perception, it's only the perception. And this is why in Oriental philosophy, they tell you, yes, magical powers are real, but they are a distraction in your path to balance, to harmony, to mind liberation, to the end of suffering. You will continue to suffer if you continue to do, uh, exploit nature, metaphysics, God, whatever. Because as we have learned, you have to alert the other side and you will. So to me, it's not, it's not necessary, all this ritualistic magic at all. Nothing is necessary, really. Everything that is happening is just pure joy. I said already, Satchitananda, right? Life is joy. It's marvelous. It's blith, blissful. Consciousness is life is Sat, that which is true. Uh, chit, consciousness, Ananda, bliss. Yes, life in and of itself is blissful. So, magic is happening everywhere. That's my only conclusion. Um, I have nothing to say, but uh, please be in touch with me on my email list if you haven't subscribed. Why? Because I may con start, say continue, so I'm doing it in Spanish, but in English as well, I want to talk to people. I want to share more than this YouTube thing that I do. Um, I know I've been um, into more projects and I talked about this recently, but that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to see how I can, I can serve you better. What is it that you want to listen? You know, we talked about this here. What is it that you want to hear from me? And that's what I'm trying to figure out. How can I be of service to you? I depend on you for that. So keep in touch with me. Uh, community's grown, people interested in this is growing. So yeah, I wanna see what it can do. But nothing else to say though, that's the end of the first part of session 73. I may do two more videos for this session because it's long, but we'll see how we get there. Anyhow, thank you so much for uh, listening, being part of this, and nothing else to say. I'll see you in part two of session 73.